Well, welcome back to the Home Lab. Today we're going to look at the workings of a device that has intrigued me since I was a child and its rather eccentric inventor, Percy Shaw. The humble road cat's eye. So this remarkable device has probably done more for road safety than anything else possibly other than um, seat belts and crumple zones. And if you're in the UK, you'll definitely know them really well. Um, they mark the centre of roads and often the edges as well. And they enable you to see really well where the edges and the centre of the road are positioned at night when you've got your car headlights on. And they come into their own in terms of safety, particularly when it's extremely foggy and it's difficult to see the road in front of you. So cat's eyes were invented and a patent application went in in 1934 from Percy Shaw, who was a man who lived in Yorkshire um, near Halifax. And he'd seen road signs. You don't see them anymore. Um, they're quite rare. Occasionally you see them on very old roads, which had little glass studs on them. So when you shone your car headlights on them, the signs lit up and reflected the light back at you. And he wondered, was there a way of actually embedding these little glass beads in the road so you could see the carriageway much more clearly when it was dark and foggy? So in a moment, we'll look at how these clever things are put together and how they work. But first, a little bit of a story. So um, I said these were um, patented in about um, 1934. I think the patent was agreed a little bit later than that. And um, they weren't really all that successful. But then came the war and the blackouts. Now, uh, the story um, that I wanted to tell about this was uh, when I was very young, I used to play at my grandmother's house and uh, there was loads. She'd lived there for years and years and there was lots of stuff left lying around in outbuildings. And I came across these two metal discs with sort of slits in them, sort of louvres in them. And I asked my parents what they were. And my dad said, oh, those are blackout um, bits for car headlights. In other words, during the war, if you were going to drive around, you didn't want to light up everywhere um, so you could be seen from the air, possible aerial attack. So you put a black sort of disc over the front of the car headlights. They probably weren't very bright in those days anyway. And those discs had little slots in them, which let just a little bit of light out onto the road. Now, you can imagine that during the wartime, it was so difficult to see where the road was, especially when it was foggy. The cat's eye was going to be the perfect solution to that problem. So with the advent of the war, the scene was set for the success of the cat's eye and Percy Shaw's company made millions of them. Um, it wasn't until 1965 that he actually got an OBE for the work that he did. And I said he was quite eccentric. Um, he drove a Rolls Royce all over the place. But in fact, he lived in a house with almost no furnishings at all. Um, his rooms had no carpets in them and no curtains. And when he invited friends over, um, he used to just serve bottled beer and packets of crisps and then chat to them. Um, the other rather weird thing was um, there was about four TV channels available at the time. Uh, televisions were expensive. So he had in his room uh, four or five TVs all switched to a different channel all playing at the same time with no sound, so his visiting friends could actually uh, watch any programme they wanted, though they wouldn't be able to listen to the sound. Anyway, you'd think he was a millionaire, but he died in 1976, and his estate was certainly not worth millions. OK, so let's go down to the bench now, and we'll have a closer look at the design of the cat's eye and some of its really clever engineering features. And we're going to particularly look a little bit more closely at how the eyes are so effective at sending light from your headlights back towards you when you're driving at night time. OK, so I've got two different cat size on the bench here. Uh, you might not spot the difference, but um, this one, which is looking really old, is a clear glass one. Uh, these are the ones you normally see in the middle of the road um, that reflect white light back at you. And um, I've actually removed one of the little retro reflectors. It's here to show you in a minute, uh, but it will have white uh, on both sides. 
Whereas this one was used for dual carriageway and this one has red eyes facing the uh, driver. And on the other side, because no one's coming that way, uh, there's nothing at all mounted in the cat's eye. So let's have a closer look at some of the design features of the cat's eye. Firstly, it's mounted in a hole in the road and what they do is they dig a hole in the road, fill it with liquid tar and then push into it a very large and very heavy block of cast iron. Uh, and that bit of cast iron is designed to stay uh, in the road at all times. Um, it has teeth in it, two sort of, um, sort of hooks on either side, and that's what these are here. So when these are mounted into the block, it's sort of keyed in like that, so the cat's eyes are held in place. So looking closer at the cat's eye, and this is an absolutely brilliant piece of design, um, you'll notice it has uh, two uh, the cat's eyes, which are sort of glass beads that are retro reflectors that are responsible for shining the light back at you when you're driving. And we'll have a closer look at how those work in a minute. But there's one other design feature which is incredibly clever, and I want to show you that now. So I don't know if you've ever thought about this, but when you're driving on a wet and sort of windy night and you're using the cat size, you're probably cleaning your windscreen all of the time to get the mud and the rain off it. So how do cat size clean themselves? Well, this has been thought out too, and it's a really clever piece of the design. Um, if you remember, the cat size sit in that sort of metal holder that's embedded in the road, and that fills with water. And cat size clean themselves when the drivers drive over them. So if ever you change lane and you go bump bump over a cat's eye, what you're actually doing is crushing the cat's eye and pushing the little glass lenses inside the cat's eye's body. And you'll notice they scrape on this wiper and that gives them a bit of clean, remembering they're probably sitting in a pool of water already. So one of the really clever features of cat size is they're passive devices. In other words, they don't have any power source. They don't have a battery inside them. And what they consist of are some really interesting glass beads that act as retro reflectors. So what I've done with this rather older cat size is, I'll turn it around here, is I've pulled out one of the retro reflectors. Um, they're quite tricky to get out. They're held inside um, with sort of metal pins. I've seen film of these being put together by women in the factories and they actually uh, pushed the retro reflector in and I guess they then hammered a pin in from underneath. I'm not quite sure if that's how it was done, but um, they're not going to come out easily on the road and go flying and hit someone. Um, that is an important safety feature of the design. So what I'm going to do now is explain in a little bit more detail how this retro reflector works and why it's such a clever design. So the best way to explain how the cat's eye uh, little lens or eye or retro reflector works is to draw a diagram. But before I do, what I want you to notice is that it's got this large sort of uh, hemispherical glass bead at the front, but there's actually some length to the body of the reflector and then a piece at the back. So it's actually made up of two distinct pieces, the glass bead at the front and a mirror reflector at the rear. So you'll see I've drawn the retro reflector here. It's a sort of bullet shape with its sort of hemispherical glass bead at the front. And then the thing to notice is it's got a bit of length to it. And then at the back, there's a curved mirror. So if you shine light into it, the light will bend towards the normal. It'll hit the rear surface, reflect at an equal angle of reflectance, come back to the front of the device and then bend away from the normal. Now, the clever thing here you'll notice is that if we shine a ray into this system, it comes back parallel, or at least it comes out parallel to the ray going in. So if that comes from the driver's headlights, these are going to shine that light straight back at the driver. So as a physicist, there's one other thing I notice about this design, and I don't know if it's meant to be like this, but I'm sure it is, that if we imagine that we're looking down on the cat's eye here, this is the driver driving down the road pretty much towards the cat's eye. OK, they'll be slightly to um, the left of them in the UK. But if you can imagine that the driver's going at a completely different angle to the cat's eyes, this ray will now come this way. Uh, the light will bend in even further and won't effectively reflect back to the driver. So the beauty of the cat's eye is that it shines light straight back towards you when you're coming towards them or at 
you know, a, a smallish angle. But if you go through a very steep angle, it's not going to shine the light back towards you. Um, so you don't see them glowing quite as brightly. So I'm in a dark room now, and you can probably tell from the acoustic, it's my bathroom. And I'm going to show how directional cat's eyes are. So I've got a bright torch shining at 90 degrees to the cat's eye, and I'm now going to turn it so it's pointing more and more directly at the cat's eye. And you'll see the lenses light up as it's almost head on. And then as we turn through a steeper angle, the cat's eye becomes less and less an effective device at reflecting back to the driver. So let's do the same experiment with a red laser pen. And what I'd like you to do is watch what happens when the red laser pen directly enters the retro reflector. There's one and here's the other side. And you'll see just how much of that light comes straight back towards us. So I do hope you enjoyed that video on the workings of the cat's eye and the story of its rather unusual inventor, Percy Shaw. If you're visiting the UK and you're not familiar with these devices, that might explain the rather strange and terrifying sign you occasionally see on roads that are being repaired. Cat's eyes removed. Anyway, do stay to the end of the video and all of my videos. I always leave links right at the end and subscribe if you feel like it. Anyway. I'll be making another video soon and I look forward to seeing you then.